It's your bread. It's your bread. It's your bread, oh God. I testified to you all in the past that back in 2020, that COVID-19 came into my body and tried to take me out, me and my wife. And, and if you've never had a breathing problem, you don't understand those words that it's your breath. It's your breath, oh God. It's your breath. God gives you the breath. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to honor him? Are you going to praise him? He's worshiped. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. It's, it's your breath. There were times I didn't know that whether I would take another breath. There were times when my breathing was labored. I know that there were people that didn't want to fall asleep because they didn't know whether they would wake up. So this morning, that song means so much to me. Oh God, it, it's your breath. In my lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. We, we pour out our praise. If we don't do nothing today, we will pour out our praise to the God that is worthy. To the God that is worthy. To the God that gave us breath. To the God that gives us another chance. Thank you. 
live. You're the reason I praise. You're the reason I worship. So I pour it out on you. So I pour Worshiping God, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Yes, it is. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pour out our praise, oh God. Forgive us, Lord God, for holding back. Forgive us, Lord God, Father, for not pouring it out, oh Lord God. Because daily, oh God, you pour out your mercy, you pour out your grace. You pour out your anointing. You pour out your goodness. You pour out your peace. You pour out your favor. You pour it out, oh Lord God, upon us. So we say, great are you, Lord. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. This morning, oh God, we ask you to anoint our service. Father God, I say none of me, but all of you use my vessel this morning to speak to your people, oh God. And oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for these, your faithful saints, oh God, that have chosen to break out in praise, to, to break out in worship, Lord God. And so we honor you, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the praise team. Thank you all so much. I want you to look at the neighbor next to you and say, God is great God is and great. greatly to be praised. To be it's, praised. His it's his breath and my lungs. And, my lungs. and so I'm going to pour it out so pour it in praise, praise to, him. to him. Oh, he's worthy. He's Amen. worthy. You may be seated. God is so good. Thank you all musicians. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I'm in the right place. Amen. For those of you all joining us, I'm so glad to have you in the house. For those of you all watching us at home, we want you to know that we are in the sanctuary on first and third uh, Sundays. And so we want to ask you to share, those of you all that's watching by, uh, by uh, uh, social media, we want to invite you to share. But this morning, we are excited. We're excited. We're excited. Uh, this year we proclaim this year as the year of walking in God's presence. Say walking, walking. in God's presence. In God's presence. So walking, it, 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 it has to do with, with movement. And so you're not staying in the same place. That's it. Okay? So you're walking in the presence of God. I submit to you that, that, that God wants to do something new in this year. Every move of God is done for a reason. Every move of God is intentional. 2020 had to happen. 2020 came that it might come to pass. Amen? There are certain things that we remember. And if you think about it, you don't remember the teachers that were nice to you. We had many nice years. Many good years. But you remember the teachers that challenged you. You remember the experiences that challenged you. Yep. And it's in those experiences that you were made, that you got stretched. They deposited something in you. They took something out of you. They did something to you. Amen? And so we say that this is the year of walking in God's presence. If, you, if you've been uh, uh, keeping up with the series, I thank God for those that have gone before me uh, in this subject matter. Uh, two weeks ago on Sunday, Pastor Edith ministered a message on, on in the fact that in his presence oh. is fullness mm. of joy. Say fullness, fullness, fullness of joy. Fullness. And last Sunday, uh, Minister Esther taught on a subject matter, 
more presence, more power. Amen? More presence, more power. Hallelujah. On Tuesday, Pastor Greg taught us. Amen? Pastor Greg, as you all know, uh, was a teacher. And I thank God for when the teachers come through. Uh, they, they just have a way of a different style. They're, 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 they have a teaching style and they put it in your laps. Uh, Pastor Greg reminded us that in God, there is mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. Exactly. Okay, so there is whatever you need. So God essentially gives us a blank check. There is peace. There is love. There is strength. There is joy. And so on and so forth. Amen? So today we want to take a look at, at, at obedience maintains the presence of God. Oh, wow. Obedience maintains the presence. That's our topic for today. Obedience, say obedience, obedience. maintains the presence. Maintain. And so it's so important for us to understand uh, uh, that, that, see, so, so the, the presence is something that you didn't manufacture it. That's right. You didn't manufacture the presence. But when it comes, you have to know what you have to do to maintain it. Say maintain. maintain. See, it's it's not all about it's not all about that you did this and you did that to get it. Okay, so now that it's here, what are you gonna do? Mm. What are you gonna do? Amen? Alright, so so I want to take my time and I want to just show you that, that since the creation of, of, of man, uh, uh, God wanted to to have fellowship, say fellowship, fellowship. with man. God wanted fellowship. And so that's why he shows up. So that's why he comes. So God is a spirit, right? God can move through here and none of us know that he came through. But what he does, God will move in such a way that somebody, he does something. He, he shifts something. He shifts atmospheres. He, he, somebody that was, that was believing God for, for, for healing, they get healed. Somebody that, 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 was, that needed strength, they, all of a sudden, they get strengthened. Somebody that barely made it in here. Somebody that barely woke up at home. Somebody that barely got out of the bed. And what God will do is that God will leave remnants of the fact that he came through. That's it. And the fact that he came through means that there was change. Yes. Say yes. change. change. See, God wants to give us his best. And what better that he can leave us is a piece of him. A presence. His, his presence. His, his presence just to say that I was there. His presence to tell you that, that I am with you. His presence to say that, 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 that I haven't forgotten you. Y'all heard me? Yes. I haven't forgotten you. His presence just to let you know. To let you know. Mm. That you may know. That you may know deep down inside. That your God Jesus. has heard your prayer. Yes. I don't know about you, but to me that, 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 that means so much. That means so much to me. To know that God has heard my prayer. Mm -hmm. That God has heard my cry. You know, you know, as, as, a, as a minister, and I'm going to be transparent with you all, I, I, I believe God so much that when you all call me and you all say, Pastor, pray for me about such and such, and I've developed a habit that instead of me writing it down and saying, okay, I'm going to pray later, okay, I'm going to pray later, and so I'll immediately go ahead on and pray. Yes. And, I, in, 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 and in some cases, you all may, just may know that I may send you a portion of the prayer yes. that I prayed for you. Well, but when it comes to me, Okay, let me be transparent with you all. When it comes to me, God is, God is taking me through something where he wants me to believe him mm -hmm. and trust him, mm -hmm. whether I see him, whether I hear him or not. See, that's not for everybody. And so when it comes to me, I got to believe. And sometimes when God speaks to me, I'm like, oh God, thank you. Thank you so much. You did hear my prayer. See, I know you heard your, your, when I cried out for Elder Sherry because Elder Sherry got healed. I know you heard my cry when I called out for Candace because Candace got healed. I know you heard my prayer when I called out for Ashley because Ashley got healed. Yes, yes, yes. But oh God, it's me. That's it. Come on, come on. It's me, oh God. Yes. Standing in the need of prayer right now. I, I need you, Lord. And so God don't always move as fast 
for me. I still got to carry the weight of the ministry. Still got to carry the weight of other things. Uh, that's, that's just how he's dealing with me in this season. And it's not for everybody. Say, it, look at your neighbor and say, it's not for everybody. Not for everybody. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so God, God wanted, God wants to have relationship with us. So relationship, relationship, relationship. And it, it, it's such to the detail that God, for whatever reason, what he, he chooses, he chooses that he wants to know things about us. He wants to know our dispensation. He wants to know how are we feeling. He wants to know what's going on with us deep down inside. He wants to know the very number of hairs on your head. Amen. And so all of this is because he wants to have relationship. Say relationship. Relationship. You know, for some of us, it's hard to believe that the everlasting God, the great I am, yes. the Alpha and the Omega, mm. loves you so much. Yes. He loves you so much. Mm. Amen. For some of us, we, 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 you know, the Bible says that we were shaped in sin and we were conceived in iniquity, right? Yes. Okay? But God still chose you. That's it. Others may think, not, may not think highly of you. And you probably can't seem to get things right. But he chooses you. That's it. Amen? And, and, and though you're not perfect and you have numerous faults, you're not perfect. Yes, Lord. But he chooses you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He chooses you. Yes. I, I, I read a quote, and the, this wrote is by Shannon Adler, and she says, you're not what others think you are. Mm. You are what God knows you are. That's it. Y'all heard me? Yes. You're not what others think you are. You are what God knows you are. Yes. Why? Because he planted some things on the inside of you. Because he put some things on the inside of you. Because he knows the lineage that you come from. And even despite that, God will choose. You know, I, I'm, I'm so blessed that, you know, in, in the Bible, uh, I, I like to read uh, in Matthew. And this is probably one area of the genealogy that, that I like. Uh, you know, like in... in, in uh, in Leviticus and in Exodus, or more so in Numbers, when they're counting the people and they say this person begat that person, and in Chronicles, this person begat that person begat begat. And sometimes I get lost in all of that. But I actually enjoy hearing the genealogy of Christ. Yes. Yes. That Mary yeah. was linked back. Right. All the way back right. to Abraham. That Mary, y'all heard what I said? Yes. That Mary was linked back. Oh, that that that, that, that that just does something to me. Yes. I, I, I picked up on another quote by uh, Dieter uh, Uchkoff, the dwarf. Uh, it's it's U C H T D O D R F. Uh, those of you all that's taking note, and he said something. He says, "Though we are complete, though we are incomplete, God loves us completely." Mm. I'm gonna say that one more time. Though we are incomplete, God loves us completely. Say completely. completely. Though we're imperfect, God loves us perfectly. perfectly. Say perfectly. perfectly. Though we may feel lost and without compass, God's love encompasses us completely. Say completely. Completely. He loves every one of us. Those who are flawed, rejected, awkward, sorrowful, or broken. There's some of us that's broken. Yeah. Amen. Don't know how to fix it. Don't know how to get it right. But that's okay. He takes all of us and he don't judge us. Amen. Amen. He takes all of us and he don't judge us. He, the, 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 you know, he takes all of us and he don't judge us. He takes all of us just the way we are and he don't judge us. Thank you, Lord. Do we have any ungrateful? Do we have any grateful? Any yes. grateful saints yes. in the house? Yes. Any grateful saints? Yes. God, thank you. Do you all know that, that you know, I, 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 I enjoy uh, praying for you all because when I think about you all, in some of you all's cases, I know the families that you all came from. And I know that God has done a new thing in your life. Yes, and God yes. has done a new thing in your generation. Amen. And God has chosen you to do a new thing in your family. Yes. And it, it gives me such good place to know that, God, you continue. You continue. You haven't forgotten. You have not forgotten us. You have not forgotten us. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. Amen. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
Amen. So the, 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 when, we, when we think about the presence of God, the earliest that we heard about the presence of God was uh, when, when Adam and Eve hid themselves. And the Bible was, it, the Bible chooses to tell us that, and the presence of God was walking in the cool of the day, yes. and Adam and Eve hid, hid themselves. themselves. And so they were familiar. It was a familiar thing. Yes, it was. That they, that they knew God was right around the corner. God was in the proximity. Yes. The definition of presence, presence is the, the state or fact of being present. I'm going to say that one more time. The state or fact of being present. There are some of you all I can call out you old names, and I can say that, 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 that you know what, we, we, we felt your presence in the service today. Yes. You know, I was sitting in my office, and all of a sudden I, I heard three notes, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Our bass player, we felt your presence. Yes. You know, I heard the keys, uh, and I, I, I knew that, that, that Minister Darius, boom, was in the house. I heard the, 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 the drums, and I heard uh, that, 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 that Isaac was in the house. Yes. Yeah. Heard the praise team, their presence was felt. Amen? Amen? And so it's the state or fact of being present. Another definition is attendance or company. Like, for example, your presence is requested. Okay? Your presence is requested. A third definition, and I hope you can see it, it says immediate vicinity or proximity. So when they heard the presence of the Lord walking in the cool of the day, it was close enough that they knew that it was within their proximity. Wow. It's right there around them. It's right there. Amen? Amen. But I thank God this morning, and I wanted, just, I wanted to show you something. In Luke, the first chapter, the 19th verse, just to show you an example of presence, Luke 119 in the NIV, Luke 119 in the NIV, uh, the, the angel Gabriel, he's speaking to Mary, for some of you all, I know it kind of gave you all a little twist when I said that that Mary was linked all the way back, maybe 70 some odd generations, that it was Mary, it was Mary. A lot of times we think about the husband, we think about the father, right? But it was Mary that was chosen. Wow. Mary was the one that was chosen yes. by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yes. So, so we are talking about Mary's lineage, Mary's generation. My okay, God. here we go. So the angel said to the, and the angel said to him, and it's to her, I'm sorry. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Watch this now. I am Gabriel. I'm telling you all who who and I'm Gabriel. I am who? I am Gabriel. I stand in the what? The presence of God. I stand in the presence of God. I'm right there. I see what God do. I hear what God say. And I have been sent to speak with you and to tell you this good news. Good news. <laughs> to tell you this good news. Yes, Amen? This yes. good news. So he, he authenticated himself as the archangel Gabriel. And he said stuff that I came to good, give you some good news. And the good news is God. Tell your neighbor, say God. God. Chose you. Chose you. Oh my, my, my God. God. That was good news. Yes. God yes. chose Mary. Just like this morning. God chose you. And God chose you, and God chose you at home, and God chose you in your living room, and God chose you yes. in your bedroom, and God chose you yes. in your car. God chose you. And so God has various ways in the Old Testament that he revealed his presence. I want to get this presence concept down in you, and then we're going to tie it to obedience. So in, in, in when God spoke to Noah... In, in, in the Bible, it says that, that God spoke to Noah uh, in Genesis. Uh, uh, it, it got, God, God actually, and you can imagine, here it is. Noah just doing his thing and he hears a voice. And I'm certain he was somewhere where he had to look. And, you know, there, it, it's something when somebody calls out, somebody says something to you. And it's in such a manner that you know that they're talking to you. It's almost like if I was to say Sarah, and Sarah knows that, you know, I may not be looking at her, 
But she heard her name and she knows I'm, I'm speaking to her. Yes. Amen? Yes, yes. God also chooses to speak in physical form. In Genesis 17, 1, Genesis 17, 1, it reads, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham. The Lord did what? Amen. Appeared. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Wow. Verse 3 goes on to, it, it, he, he, he says what he's going to do. He's going to make his covenant. Verse 3 says, then Abraham fell on his face. Mm -hmm. Abraham fell on his face. Abraham fell on his face because it, it, the, the, I can just imagine the, 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 what he saw when it says that God appeared to him. Whatever he saw was it was enough to make him fall down on his face. That's it. That's it. God also appears in visible form, and this is the one where we're gonna we're gonna home in on because there's some nuggets that we want to glean from this. He appeared in visible visible form, and when I say in visible form, you're gonna get what I meant uh, by that. In in Exodus the 13th chapter, the 21st verse, Exodus 30 uh, 13 21, it reads, "And the Lord went before them by day, and the who, and the Lord." And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. Mm -hmm. And so here it, it, it's, it's, it's God's chosen people that's being led by his presence. Mm -hmm. Say presence. presence. So remember now, this says that God went before them. So that means that wherever they saw that thing that we just saw, that cloud, that fire, they knew that the presence of God was embodied in that thing. Okay? So God chose not to show them himself as he did with Abraham because when Abraham saw what he saw, all Abraham could do is fall to his face. Yes. But no, this is Exodus. This is the book of Exodus. We got to leave this place. We got to get them all out of here. Yeah, okay? Yes. And so, so we, 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 need to, we need to go somewhere. So I'm going to show you a cloud. Yeah. And you're not going to be afraid. Yeah. But you, have, you are going to have a little bit of fear in you. Yeah, exactly. Because see, I am God. Right. Yeah. And so watch this now. You know, what's so amazing is, is, uh, I was, I was in, in reading, when you look at, at how God led, led his people, God led them to the Red Sea. Y'all heard me? Yes, he did. God led them to the Red Sea. You old Bible scholars, go back and take a look at it. Uh, and, uh, I, I want to I tell you this morning, so, so God, God leads his people, just like God leads us, and God wants to lead you, and God wants to lead me, but he wants to do it with his presence. Yeah, yeah. So watch this now. In Jeremiah 29 11, Jeremiah 29 11, in the NIV it says that I know the plans. In the King James it says, I know the thoughts, right? I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans to prosper you and to not harm you. And watch this now. Plans to give you hope and a future. So so I submit that just as God's plans, God's call thoughts are higher than our thoughts, his plans are also what? Much, much more higher than our plans. Much, much more better than our plans. When I was coming up, I remember there used to be this bumper sticker that used to say, God, God is my co-pilot, or something like that. Yeah. Jesus is my yeah. co-pilot. And then later on, as I, and, I, and I embraced that. And I was like, wow, that really, really sounds good. Until I came up with something else, and I saw something that said, that if God is your co-pilot, switch seats. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let him lead. Amen. That's right. Let him lead. Let so him I want us to take a look at whether that thing meant that he led them by a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire. In Numbers the 15th chapter, in Numbers the 9th chapter, the 15th verse, Numbers 9, 15, I want you to see this. Verse 15, and we're going to read from the NIV. I hope you're being blessed. It says, on the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, and just so you all know that that, that uh, 
We're talking hundreds of thousands of people that's traveling together. And God came in and God gave order. And God gave some instructions on regarding how they should set things up. Regarding some of the tents that they should set up. And so God chose, just like he chose you, just like he chose me, God chose to come in the form of a cloud and cover this particular tent. And it says, from evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle, watch this now, looked like fire. So from evening till morning, the cloud did what? Looked like fire. All right. Verse 16, that is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Verse 17, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent and the Israelites set out, wherever the cloud settled, came down, right? The Israelites encamped. So whenever it lifts, that tells them, okay, we're going to go, we're going to move. When it settles, we gonna stay. We gonna stay, right? Okay, so good, good, good. So verse 18. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command they encamped. As long as the clouds stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. They obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. I want you all to know that, 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 that this, this, this whole thing of, 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 of the presence of God. Here it is. They, were, they, 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 had to, they had to obey God's voice. But they had to obey God in such a manner it was their action. It was their action. Obeying God. See, somebody has to look at your life and see that, oh yeah. That person is obeying God. How do I know that they're obeying God? I can look at their action. Yeah. I can follow them. If I was to wake up and, and follow them in the morning and see what they do and watch what they do and I follow them throughout the week, I would know that person is what? That's right. Following God, obeying God, obeying God. Amen? So, so God, is a, God is, a, is a loving father. He's a loving father. He wants to lead you. He, he knows what's best for you. He wants to answer your prayers. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to guide you to that firm that's going to pay you more. That place, that employment, that job that's going to be better for you. He wants to give you that spouse that he has chosen for you. I remember when I was coming up. I was born in the 60s, the mid-60s, and they were starting to use computers and airplanes and, 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 and certain things a lot more. And, and, and one of the things that they did when, when, when airplanes, would, uh, the, the pilot could just dial in the coordinates for his destination, and the plane knew what was the, the best speed to go. The altitude to go. The, you know, the, 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 they, they, they had all of that figured out. Just so you know, they had all of the pilots, uh, the, the engineers had all of that figured out. And so what happened is that from time to time, airplanes crashed. And you would always hear they say, well, we're, we're examining the black box. And in some cases, you hear that they would rule the crash as human error. Human error. I'm going somewhere with this. Human error. Last year, we, 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 we studied a book entitled, it, it, It's Happening, by uh, Pastor William McDowell. And, and, and in that book, he made some key statements. He says that there are no accidental moves in God. There's no oops in God. God don't tell you to do something and all of a sudden it breaks or something happens or there, there's no oops in God. Look at your neighbor and say, there's no oops in God. So God chooses to move as God chooses to move. And there's never, ever God error. There's human error, but there ain't no God error. Y'all heard me? There's never God error. Here we go. We're going to keep it moving. But I want you to know our response to the word 
determines the results. That's something else that he said in the book. Our response to the word determines the results. Now, I, 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 I want to tell you, you, you said, Pastor, our topic is about obedience. Our topic is about obedience. And I want, I want to show you something. I want you to see that this entire concept of following a cloud, following a fire, it may be harder than you thought it may be. Because in verse 20, in verse 20, it reads that sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle for a few days. In verse 21, it says that sometimes it was over the tabernacle till from evening until morning. And then in verse 22, it says that sometimes it was over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year. Now I want to talk to you. Now I want to talk to you. My God. I believe that the God that we serve, he's very much intentional. He's very intentional in the manner in which he's grooming us. Why take us one day? Why take us a half a day? Why do, why do this? Why have us to stay there for a year? Why a month? Why two months? Hmm? I was listening to a brother speak. And this brother is, is a well-known man of God that, that recently lost his wife last year. And he said that, you know, we can ask God questions, but we can't question God. Oh, wow. I'll say that one more time. Oh, wow. We can ask God questions, but we can't question God. You, you're not in no position to question his action. Amen? Wow. So, so, so God is very intentional in the manner in which he's grooming us. You're being groomed. In the manner that he builds our faith. He's building your faith. In the manner, in, in the timing and when he moves. When he shows up. When he opens doors. When he shows mercy. When he disciplines us. A parent responds to a toddler in different ways. As the parent would respond to a 7 year old. Or a 17 year old. Or a 27 year old. A parent responds differently. That's right. Amen. Yes. The toddler don't have patience. So mommy starts calling out to the toddler from the next room. Okay, baby, I'm coming. I'm on my way. So that's important for baby to hear that. And seven, Tommy needs to, to develop some patience yeah. while mommy makes him a sandwich. Right, right, right. Okay? At 17, Rodney needs to get rid of some impulsive behavior. Because now, because his mistakes only affects him. Right. But at 27, Matthew has knowledge, he's gone to school, but he needs to develop some work ethics, learn some new skill sets. He gotta learn to put aside reckless behavior, right. and he gotta be responsible, not just for him, but for also what? His family. Yes. Because now his mistakes will not only affect him, but his family. That's right. So if he's habitually late, if he, if he, if he, if he fights on the job, if he disrespects his peers and, and his supervisors and he gets fired and he loses his job, it affects his families, right? Right. So so now I wanna I wanna I wanna get back to I wanna get back to 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 to, to, to God. Why why is it that God moves? But God moves. God opens doors. I remember I applied for a job, and for a while I could not get a job that I wanted. And so God allowed me to work somewhere else. And in me working in that other place, I could develop some new skill sets. And I met some people that would help me to go to the next level. Y'all remember what I said? Yeah. I met some people that helped me to think differently, that would help me, that made some deposits in me. So there are times that God takes you on a detour, that God closes the door, and you don't even know why God is doing it. That's true. That is so true. I wasn't ready for the job that I had applied for. That's right. Ten months later, I get a phone call. Oh, we want to call you about the job that you applied for. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I didn't even remember that I'd applied for the job. Oh, wow. But I went on ahead. But now I was ready. Yeah. And I got the job. Yeah. Amen. So God knows whether he's going to tell you to move, yeah. to stay. Yeah, yeah. But then God, there are times God wants to see. Are you going to listen? Yeah. Are you going to be obedient? Yeah. Are you going to stay? Huh? What are you going to do when I speak to you? Good work, Pastor. What are you going to do when I don't speak to That's you? That's right. Mm -hmm. Good person. Good person. 
Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Are you going to continue to be faithful? Yes. I came across a quote that I wrote down in my journal. And I, I go from time to time, I go back to, and read it. It says, he works on his time. His time is best for you. I'm sorry. It says, it says God does not work on our time. He works on his time and his time is best for you. I'm going to say that one more time. God does not work on our time. God does not work on our time. He works on his time and his time is best for you. Tell your neighbor, say his time is best for you. See, God will open some doors. Uh, when he, you know, when, when God opens doors, can he trust us to move? Can he trust us to represent him? Yeah. I remember the job that I had gotten. I had gotten it because a friend of mine had given a recommendation to me. And the VP of the firm, he called me to his office and he said, I want you to know that part of the reason that we hired you was because your friend so-and-so spoke highly of you. And so, it, 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 so essentially he was telling me, if you mess up, it's going to make him look bad also. It's a reflection on him. I want you all to know that if we mess up, it's a reflection on our God. Amen? Yes, yes. It's a reflection on our God. Because there are some things that God wants. And what is it that God wants? In 1 Samuel 15, 22. 1 Samuel 15, 22. And I can just say it. Samuel makes a comment. And Samuel says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. See, some of us, we think that, that and, and I'm going to read the entire thing. And it says, and Samuel says, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey, to obey is better than sacrifice. than sacrifice. I'm reading this from the King James Version. And to hearken than the fat of rams. Of rams. So during this pandemic, family, we were on time out and, and we saw that the rain fell on the just and the unjust. unjust. We were confined to our homes. It's almost like, like God just for a year, just, just for a year. And so today I want to, I want to ask you all, what's the presence of God in our homes? My God. Were we being led by the voice of God. Amen? By his presence. In Numbers 23, 923, and we're not going to read it, the important part of that, of, of, of Numbers 923, talks about that they obeyed the Lord's order. God was with them for 40 years, and so that means that for 40 years, for 40 years they were obeying God's voice. We came across a new concept in Samuel's, the, 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 the fourth chapter and the 21st verse, for those of you all taking notes. And the, the name is Ichabod. Ichabod means the glory of the Lord has departed. The glory of the Lord has departed. You don't want your obedience to cause the glory of the Lord my God. to depart. You don't want that, amen? So it's by my obedience with my worship. God looks at my obedience with my worship, my obedience with my tithes, my obedience with my offering, my obedience with my prayers, my obedience in my devotion, my obedience to his voice. Can I trust you to go and do this for me? Can I trust you to do that for me? God is looking at my obedience when he speaks. Our obedience when he don't speak. He looks at our obedience, yeah, yeah. whether we're happy, our obedience, whether we're sad. He looks at our obedience whether you got money. That's it. He looks at our obedience when even when you don't have money, when you're broke. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be obedient? Mm. Amen. And so in us being obedient, we maintain the presence of God. We maintain, because God is not going to speak to you if he has to, if, if you're constantly disobeying him. He tells you go left and you go right. He tells you look up and you look down. He tells you go to room, to the fifth floor and you go to the first floor. No, God is not. So God wants to, so your obedience yeah. will maintain the presence yes. of God. Yes. 
there's a corollary to this regarding the fear of God. I'm not going to get a chance to go over it today. But this morning, I want you to know something. God looks at the heart. God tells us about a, a story of a lady that when it came to giving, she gave a penny. And Jesus said she gave more than everybody else. That's it. Because she was obedient. That's it. She could have said, I'm going to keep this. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I'm going to eat again. I don't, I don't have, I don't, I don't, but no, she didn't look at her lap. That's it. That's it. But she looked at her God. Yeah. There are times we focus too much on our problems yes. instead of focusing on our God. Yeah. Let us pray. Jesus. Oh God, our Father, we bless you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We honor you today. We thank you for being so good to us. Oh God, as we settle right now, Father God, we recognize that during this time that you've chosen, oh God, Lord God, the year 2020 to do some things. But oh God, you have brought us through. Oh God, you have brought us out. And we desire your presence, Lord God. We want more of you, Lord God. We want more of you. We want to hear you, Lord God. So, Father, we know that we have to be obedient in our actions. We know, Lord God, that as, as church was on time out, that you visited us, that you looked at us in our homes. You saw our behavior. You saw our giving. You saw our obedience. You saw our rebellion. You saw our laziness. You saw, Lord God, our worship. And so this morning, oh God, Father, as we pray before you, we just thank you for being such a good God. We thank you, Lord God, that in 2021, that you're a God that continues to bless. And so we give you thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we all said, Amen. 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 This morning, I want you to know if, if you once knew God and you somehow walked away from God, I want you to know that the Lord was always within your proximity. The Lord's eyes were always upon you because you belong to him. So if you once knew God and for some reason you fell away from God, 1 John 1, 9 tells us is that your rededication to God is as simple as you just coming back and you crying out to God and, and you telling God, asking God for, for forgiveness. The Bible says that when we ask for forgiveness, he's faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive us. That's a personal decision. But if you didn't, if you never confessed Christ in your life, if you never knew the God that we're talking about, this morning it would be an honor to extend an invitation to you. This morning I want you to know that it's as simple as Romans 8, Romans 10, 8, 9. The Bible says, what say it? it? The word is nigh thee, the word is near you, even in your mouth, that the Lord Jesus, that's all you gotta do, that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that God raised Jesus from the dead, yes. that you can be saved. You can be saved in your living room. You can be saved in your bedroom. You can be saved in your car. You can be saved right here in the sanctuary. It's as simple as you confessing. This morning, for the sake of those of you all that would say that prayer, I want you all to just bow your heads with me. And let's just pray that prayer with our family of God that may, may be saying that prayer for the first time. And I want you to say, Father God, Father God forgive, me forgive me for I have sinned I have sin. in, thought, in thought, in word, in word and, in and in deed. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And, I believe and I believe that you rose Jesus from the dead. That you rose Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth with and my believe mouth. in my heart. And I thank you for saving me. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, you just got saved. There's a party going on in heaven for you. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen.
God is so good. This morning we we have a few things that we're going to do. Uh, today is first Sunday, as you all know, so we will go ahead on and uh, proceed with communion. Amen. I want to call up Pastor Yvonne Strawn as we proceed with communion. And then we will pray over our vision boards. Some of you all made your vision boards. Amen. So we want you all to go ahead on and pray over your, your vision board. We'll, we'll do that. Amen. We'll close up on the... Amen. So, Pastor, 